works is this is the beginning of the turbo machinery. So right now, we are off the shelf sourcing our turbo machinery. This is the same process SpaceX took when they built their initial rockets. They bought the turbo machinery from the existing company. So that's what we do. So the air comes into the turbojet, and we do what you do in almost any type of system. We squeeze it. We compress it. Your car, you see a car cylinder compresses. It's the first thing we need is compression. The next thing that we do is we mix it with fuel and we ignite it and we get a lot of extra energy. We then blow that air out through a turbine. The turbine spins and it is connected by a rod to the compressor. That's what powers the compressor. That's a traditional jet engine. That's what keeps the system running. And then at that point, you just exhaust out. The thing is, only about 30% of the oxygen is actually burned. 70% of the air coming out of a jet engine tailpipe is oxygen, which we can burn more to. So then what we do is we take that air out, we slow down the speed of it, so that's what we're coming out, and we mix more fuel. With that fuel mix, we can get more energy, and we mix it up to burn all of the oxygen. and get every bit of energy out of the flow. So we ignite it here, we have essentially a combustion chamber, it burns here, and then we have a variable area nozzle, which we use to accelerate the flow out to the max velocity we can get uh, to get the maximum thrust. And that's how an afterburning turbojet uh, works. What you notice, is from the initial turbojet, which is putting out about 300 pounds of thrust, and then you guys heard when it, when it pops, I mean, she comes on, we're getting a 50. Variable power. And that was, yeah, that was a low power run, running, running, max power run. It was probably 30-ish percent power on the demo we just did to you guys. So um, that type system, we're getting a 50 to 100 percent thrust increase, but notice, no cross-sectional area increase. That's why you want it. Because airplanes, when it comes to drag, they're concerned about cross-sectional area. That's why what does an airline look like? Long and thin. We make airplanes really, really long because the greatest component to drag is a cross-sectional area. So that's why you use an afterburning turbojet. You essentially drag free, get a 50% increase in your thrust. And that's that system. So then the next thing we're going to do, though, is we, we talked about this in uh, your, your general engineering principles. I'm terrified because the dean of engineering is here. <laughs> <laughs> so so is one of the things we need is we need pressure rods. Right? And that's why we have a compressor. Well, if you've ever driven in a car, you stick your hand outside the car, uh, you can feel that air pressure. And then when you're going down the interstate, you can really feel air pressure. In fact, if you're going about Mach 2, there's so much air pressure that you no longer need the compressor. You are ramming the air in. That's what we call a ramjet. At that point, I don't need this at all. I'm going so fast, there's so much pressure rise, I can get the thrust out of it. So then what I do is I'll take this air, I'll route it around the turbo jet, back into the afterburner, and then ignite it as a pure ramjet. That's called turbine-based combined cycle. That's the next major uh, step in our tech chart. In fact, that's what that congressional ad is specifically funding, is the hardware that will take the air, route it around, and inject it back in. The good news is, that's why this technology is directly relevant to our end goal, because from here to the end, it does not change. So this is exactly the scaled-down version of what we intend to go to space with. Mm -hmm. All right, there you guys go. That's why I walked and talked to you.